she told me that people like us, they will be coming for us. So I asked her which people and why would they be coming for us. She said that we know too much. We know too many things, so there are people in time to come that will be coming for us, coming to kill us. Hello again, people of Earth, people of St. Lucia, my country where I'm from. My name is Anita Joseph. I am here today to share with you a little bit or maybe a lot of my um, situation and stuff that has been happening in my life, uh, uh, a gift of testimony review today. Um, first of all, to begin with, I, I am a born Christian or um, a true Christian, I could say. I was raised with four of my siblings, my mom and dad, separated so we were left with dad alone um, apparently my dad is a seven-day adventist and he raised us all um, as adventist also and due to us growing up without a mom by our side and he alone struggled we tend to stray away but i one of them which strayed away took my own path and i decided to grow up doing whatever I want, whatever I please. We completely forget about God and what he gave us in our lives and what he did for us. And eventually, while I grew up, I met a handsome guy, which is today my husband. Um, we rented a small business in Fuasho Castries. And since I had that shop, things just changed drastically. Knowing that I strayed away from God, um, having that shop was a difficult thing for me to have go through. And there were a lot of fight downs, a lot of uh, people that were jealous and all sorts, all of the above. Then eventually I had a friend I used to tell of what used to happen to me in that shop and things I had to be going through and things they used to be dropping by. And I myself fell into the idea of going to uh, Obiaman House and to ask for assistance, to do other things, you know, um, to keep the business going. And at first, I thought it was okay. I thought it was good. I, I felt so pleased in what I was doing. Eventually, going back and forth to Obiaman House, I, I myself became so deep into it. I started to practice it on my own because I, did, I was tired of paying money to always get things done for me. So eventually I started to practice witchcraft and so on myself. And it wasn't the best, but I did it anyway. And um, during the course of doing these things, it felt good. It felt so good that I was, you know, doing things for myself and trying to help myself go forward due to having a business and to keep it. But it wasn't all that good. I experienced most of the worst things in my life, um, spiritual death and so on. But it, was, it wasn't all good, trust me. It wasn't all good. But then it felt good. And I did so many things I never thought I would have done. And... The kind of people I used to mingle with, the kind of places I used to go, everything was so terrible, but it felt good. Eventually, I came across a pastor by the name of Morian. They used to have some crusades and stuff, and I felt the urge to go. I just felt the need to go. But all the time, it wasn't just me. It was the Holy Spirit pulling me away from these things. But yet, I used to shut it out. I used to shut it out and always pretend, you know, I am hard-headed and feel like what Satan was showing me was so much sweeter. So I used to reject the Holy Spirit calling. Then afterwards, I felt that God was calling me. 
I used to have dreams, reoccurring dreams that things that would be happening and um, the tragedies that would be coming upon us if we didn't turn to God. And I kept turning these dreams away, pretending like it was nothing, but it kept coming and coming and coming until one day I say, okay, I will listen. So I continued with my journey. I went to crusade and then the pastor used to talk to us and show us the things that God himself will do for us and what he could do and what he has done. And I realized that God did a lot, truly, because I could have died so many times. Spiritual accidents. I almost lost my life once on a pedestrian with my daughter. And I felt something, just something pulled me back from my shirt. And that day the vehicle passed so close, flush to my body. We could have been buttered on the road that day. But I knew it was the grace of God because I am still here. But that's not the only thing that happened. I could have gotten crushed in the tunnel road one time by two trucks, two mixer trucks. I saw everything because at that moment, I used to be practicing witchery, like I say. I was able to see things I never thought I would have seen in my life. And that's how I was able to have seen that would have happened. But yet still, without God putting a hand for me in that situation, I could have also been dead. I also experienced another death experience that I, after birth of my last daughter, I had um, pulmonary embolism, which is blood clot in my lungs. And... I couldn't breathe, but I remembered praying. I prayed so hard, I prayed so much. And I even thought God wasn't hearing me. I said, but God, what did I do so much? I don't want to die and leave my other children behind. I don't want to leave my family behind. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I almost thought he wasn't hearing me. But today I am here to testify that. He didn't let me die. He brought me back so I can share today my testimony with you. So many things has happened. Sometimes I don't even know where to start or, or what to say because it's been so much. But then before all of that happened with my birth defects situation, I gave my life to God and I believe that's what that saved me that day because long before it happened i can say about one month after i got baptized is when everything changed for me everything changed tremendously my life became so much easier all the things that used to transpire never happened all the negativity all the evil spirits everything it's like everything was just taken away from me. Everything just disappeared. God made that miracle. He made that change. And I know he can make that change for you too. We are not the only ones struggling. There are people with so much more than what I have been through. And I know that with him, all things are possible. All things could change. And I am so glad that I gave my life to God. I'm so glad. I never regret one day. But I'm trying every day to try to draw my children closer to him, to try to draw my husband closer to him, to see that that change that happened to me would happen for them also. And I'm so grateful today to be able to share. i honestly not able to tell you everything I want to say, but... The, the honest truth about it is that God made these changes because it's not easy to just get out of witchcraft or, or go into Obi Amen house. It feels good, trust me. It feels good. It's not easy. I had so many things. I, I, I bought 
of books and, and tarot cards and candles and all kinds of it. Trust me, it's, it's some of the worst things I never thought I'd have in my hand. I had them. I used to play with these things. And the devil makes you feel it's so good. He makes you feel powerful. Like you can do all things, but that's not true. He's only leading you in his trap. He don't want to burn alone. He wants us to burn with him. And since Jesus shed his blood for us on that cross to save us from these kinds of sins, I can say today I am set free. My life wasn't easy. Everything was hard. But today, my life feels great, wonderful. No suffering. I, I, I cannot remember the last time I was sad or unhappy or in pain or feeling anything like that. He made a great change in my life and I know he can make that great change for you also. Whatever it is you're going through, whatever struggles you've been through in your life, it's not over. We need to know that it's not over. And with Jesus, all things are possible. All things. So let's come together. Let's gather together, people, to make things happen, to bring our lives to God. Because there is a time coming. That time is coming, and it's not nothing easy. We are already in the last days. Things of revelation is already happening. We can see the things are happening. So let us gather ourselves together, our children, our family members, to bring ourselves to God. Turn to Him. Don't play hard-headed. Because I cannot help you with that fire we're going to be taking. The devil himself cannot help you. He will laugh. Because he wants to take as many souls as possible. But if you just let Jesus come through, you will see a difference. What he can do for me, he can do for you. So I thank you for listening.